Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to integrals of this form, ax plus b all to the power n, where a and b are constants. Now, you're going to get integrals that are going to look like that, say this one here, 5x minus 1 all to the power 3. You can see that a is the 5, b is the minus 1, and n is 3. Now you could expand this out and then integrate all the terms, but what I'm going to show you in this video is a much simpler way, leading to a very simple answer. So I wouldn't encourage you to expand that. You might find that you get a question something like this, and this is in this form. We could pull out the 3 in front of the integral sign, not that you have to, but it leaves us with ax plus b to the power n type of integral. Although it might not readily seem to be in that form, but our a is the minus 2, the b is the 7, and the power n is the 5. So that does have that form. And you might find that you've got integrals like this, which don't readily seem to be in this form. But with a little adjustment, we can write it in that form. We could pull out the 4, okay, and bring 9x minus 5 squared in the denominator up to the top and use the negative power, minus 2. So clearly we've got it in that form. And we're not restricted to integrals like that. We could have an integral that involves, say, cube roots. We've got here an example of the cube root of all of 7x minus 2 squared. That can be written in this form because you should know your indices rules that this is the same as 7x minus 2 to the power 2 thirds. So we could write that then as this. Now there's another one I've got here which I'm going to ask you to have a look at when I've finished showing you how to do integrals of this nature. And it's a combination of these two examples. So how do we go about integrating ax plus b to the power n with respect to x? Well, there's a formula for this and I'm just going to give you this formula now, but on the next page, after you've done this question here, or you might want to fast forward, I'll show you how this is proved. It's basically the inverse of the chain rule. But as I say, I'll take you through that later. For now, all we need to do is just use this formula. And it's very easy because we're given ax plus b to the power n, and the answer is to just simply write our ax plus b but this time to the power n plus 1. We add 1 to the power. And we also divide by that new power. Sounds familiar? We used to do that kind of thing when we had ax to the power n. But only in this type, the a is also divided. Okay? So, all I'm going to say then is when we've got ax plus b to the power n, all we do then is just add 1 to the power, okay, and multiply that n plus 1 with the a, the value in the front of x, and divide it, okay, that product. And we mustn't forget that constant of integration, plus c. Now you also notice I've written that n is not equal to minus 1. There is an exception to this rule. If I had ax plus b to the power minus 1, in other words, 1 over ax plus b, the reciprocal of ax plus b, then if I use this formula and n was minus 1, I'd end up with 0 here, minus 1 add 1, 0. And 1 divided by 0 is an undefined value. So that's a special one which we'll look at later. So I've got these examples here and I'm going to show you how we go about integrating them. And at any point you might want to pause the video and just carry on working out the solutions. 
Anyway, let's take this first one, 5x minus 1 all to the power 3. If we take the formula, what we've got to do then is just simply write our 5x minus 1, okay, 5x minus 1, add 1 to the power, so it's going to be 3 add 1, which is 4, and do 4 times the value in front of the x, the a value, 4 times 5 is 20, and just divide this by 20. I'm going to write 1 20th, okay, there. In these other examples, I might change that. I might decide just to write it all over 20. That's up to you, okay? So I'm going to write plus c as well, okay? Right, that's that one. So that's basically it. Now with this next one, okay, I've actually partially started this one because all I need to do is add 1 to the power of 7 minus 2x to the power 5. So that's going to be 7 minus 2x to the power 6. And not forgetting that 3 that's out in the front. Okay, so you're going to get something like this. But don't forget, we need to divide by 6 times the value in front of the x, which is the minus 2, our a value. So 6 times minus 2 is minus 12. So I need to divide this by minus 12. I'll put the minus 12, in fact, right in the bottom there. OK? And not forgetting that constant of integration. And you can see that this simplifies. I could divide top and bottom by 3, and that goes 4. So I end up really with minus 4 there. So writing that out, then we get this as our answer. Minus a quarter, all times 7 minus 2x to the power 6 plus the constant of integration. Hope you're feeling a bit confident now. OK, but I'll run through this next one. Or you might like to pause the video at this stage and have a go. Anyway, for this one, I'm going to add 1 to the power. Adding 1 to minus 2 is going to make it minus 1. And I'm going to divide by minus 1 times that 9, minus 9. So what I end up with is this answer here. 4 over minus 9 times 9x minus 5 to the power minus 1. And all I've done now is just said 4 divided by 9 is going to be minus 4 ninths. And decided to put the 4 in the centre of the top here. OK? And we've got our constant of integration, of course. Now with this next one, OK, dealing with roots, then all I've got to do here, again, is just add 1 to the power. Adding 1, or 3 thirds to that power of 2 thirds, is going to be 5 thirds. So it's going to be 7x minus 2 to the power 5 thirds. And then I need to do 5 thirds times the 7 which is going to be 35 thirds, and divide by 35 thirds. So if you do that, you're going to get this line here. And by multiplying top and bottom by 3, it ends up as 3 over 35, OK? And you can see that the 5 thirds I've changed into the cube root of 7x minus 2, all to the power 5. OK? So, as I said, Earlier, got a question here that I definitely encourage you to do. Use the ideas that we've talked about, say here and here, OK? And also in this one. Give you a moment then just to uh, pause the video. And when you come back, we'll go through that solution. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So let's see how you got on. Well, here's the solution. Hopefully you got it. What I've done is pulled out the 6, as you can see, in front of the integral. OK, and then I've seen the denominator here as 7 minus 5x to the power 3 over 2, because we're taking the square root. But bringing it up to the top made it to the power minus 3 over 2. And then adding 1 to that power, this is the same as adding 2 over 2 
to that is going to make it minus one half. And then I do minus a half times the minus five, so it's going to be plus five over two. And I divide that, okay? So need to just times top and bottom by two. And if I do that, I'm going to get six times two, which is 12 over the five and bring down the seven minus five x to the minus half as seven minus five x to the power half, which is the same as the square root of seven minus five x. And then don't forget that constant of integration. Okay, I hope you're able to get that solution. Well done if you did. If not, hopefully you've been able to now fathom out how we work these out. Okay, now I did say to you that I will show you how we derive this formula, okay? And after this, I'm going to give you an exercise of four questions, just as a summary exercise that you might like to try. If you don't want to see this proof, then I would encourage you then just to skip forward and miss this next page, okay? Now, to prove that result, what I'm going to do is use the chain rule, which hopefully you're familiar with. dy by dx equals dy by dt times dt by dx. It's as if these dt's cancel out and just leave you with dy over dx. Now what I'm going to do is just run through a numerical type of question and then we'll approach the algebraic one. It shouldn't take too long. If we take y equals, say, 4x minus 3 to the power 6, and you'll notice, obviously, I've written these in blue and red. You'll see y in a few moments. But it has the form ax plus b to the power n. And if I multiply the 6 with the 4, the power n, with our value of a, we would get 4 times 6, is 24. And if we write 1 over 24, not that I'm going to do that, you'll see I've written it as 1 over 4 times 6. But nonetheless, it is 1 over 24 there. Then, if I'm going to want to differentiate this, I'm going to need to use the chain rule. And so I would let t equal the 4x minus 3 in cases like this, okay? And that would mean that y would be equal to 1 over 24, or 1 over 4 times 6, times, in place of 4x minus 3 to the power 6, I've written t to the power 6. So we can now pick up on working out what dy by dx is. dy by dx will be equal to dy by dt first, times dt by dx next. Well, we're going to work out what dy by dt would be, okay? So, we look at dy dx, and this is dy by dt, because you've got your constant in the front, 1 24th, okay, I've left it there. And then you do the differential of t to the power 6, which is 6t to the power 5. There you go, 6t to the power 5. So that's the dy by dt bit. Now we need to multiply it with the dt by dx. And if you differentiate t with respect to x, you're clearly going to get that blue 4. Okay, let's just pop that in there. Now, can you see what's going to happen? The 6 and the 4 here are going to cancel out with the 4 and the 6 there, just leaving me with t to the power 5. And I've replaced that t with 4x minus 3. So what is this saying? What well, is saying that if I was to integrate 4x minus 3 to the power 5, I would get this result here, okay? And I've got that written in here. Only I haven't written 1 over 4 times 6, as you can see. I've written 1 over 24. So what are we doing? Well, we saw before on the previous page that if I had to integrate this, what did I do? I added 1 to the power, so I added 1 to the power, and divided by the result of doing 6, times the 4. Okay, 6 fours, 24, 1 over 24. So you can see it works. Now what I'm going to do here, as I said, is just run through an algebraic version of what we've done. Same thing, okay? If we had 
y equals 1 over a times, not n, but I've changed it to n plus 1, and taken ax plus b to the power n plus 1. Then I'm going to let t equal the ax plus b, just like I did down here. Okay, so we'll let t equal the ax plus b. And so that means that y in terms of t is going to be 1 over a times n plus 1. And then in place of ax plus b, it's going to be t to the power n plus 1. So when it comes to differentiating this, dy by dx is going to be dy by dt, first of all. And that's what you get in the square bracket here. If you differentiate this, you've got the constant here. All right. And differentiating t to the power n plus 1, it'll be n plus 1 times t. And you reduce 1 from the power. So it'd be t to the power n. And then we times it by dt by dx. And if I differentiate t with respect to x, you just get that a there. And can you see that the a and the n plus 1 cancel out with the a and the n plus 1 in the denominator there, leaving us with t to the power n, or ax plus b to the power n. OK, so what does this mean? Well, if I was to integrate this, I end up with this result. OK, so we can write that formula in, and that's what we had before. And I've written again here, note that n cannot be equal to minus 1, all right? Because we'll end up with 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. So you cannot integrate reciprocals of, that's 1 over ax plus b, okay? There'll be no solution if we use this method. Right, okay. Well, after this, I did say that I would give you a set of questions to try, just for further practice. So all I'm going to do then is just leave you to pause the video and have a go at these. When you come back, I'm just going to display the solutions, all right, so you can check them. Good luck. See you in a few moments. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's see how you got on. Here are the answers. Well, do check them through slowly and see how I've done them. Remember, just simple case of adding 1 to the power, like in this example, adding 1 to the 2 gave me the 3. Multiply the 3 with the value attached to the x, which what we called a. 3 times 7, 21, divide by the 21. And just simplify. OK, so I hope that's been of value to you. And if so, do give us a like. You might want to even subscribe to my channel and uh, then you'll have updates to anything that I put up. So thanks for watching. Hopefully see you in another video. Bye for now.